Hey guys, Garrett here, and today is part three of our DIY geothermal how-to series. And not everything with geothermal is going to be DIY, but I'm covering everything that can be. So this one is gonna be all about the pipe penetrations through your basement walls or your floor or however it is that you are getting those pipes into your house. If you missed parts one and two, part one was about soils and everything to do with thermal conductivity and different soil types. Part two was about the trenches as well as the temperatures at different depths throughout the country. All right, we're gonna assume that you have all of your pipes laid out at this point. They're all coming and they're getting ready to be punched through the house, but most people are going to have some sort of a concrete foundation, whether it's like me, I have an ICF house, I had to punch through that or you know, you're just typical concrete foundation, or it could be a CMU type foundation, really doesn't matter. The vast majority of this applies to all of it. So how do you get it through? Well, you're obviously gonna have to drill some holes. This is exactly what I used to do mine. This is a one inch concrete bit and it is specific to go through concrete bits. You're going to have to have a hammer drill. I use this, this is one inch and it did my three quarter inch HDPE pipes. Now obviously if you're gonna be going with a bigger pipe, you're gonna need a bigger drill bit or you're just gonna have to get into some sort of a coring rig. You can usually rent those at any rental place but uh, they are heavy, unwieldy and if you can get to where you're just using a small bit it's something you can do yourself. This one inch bit fit almost perfectly with my three quarter inch HDPE pipe. And you're either going to be using HDPE pipe or PEX A pipe. But the thickness wise, that one inch was almost perfect. It was actually a slight bit small, so I just kind of had to waller it around just a bit to open up that, uh, that space to be able to punch that pipe through, but it wasn't that big of a deal. I'm of the mindset you want the tightest fit that you can possibly have with your pipes going through your foundation. When you drill through your foundation, I would usually go from the inside towards the outside. You've got more room on the inside to be able to drill through, and I'm gonna assume that you're gonna be doing it on a wall. So you're gonna be using a bit like this, but remember, don't just go straight through. Put it at a slight downward angle. You want the, the outside of it to be lower than the inside. So if there is any water that does get into that, uh, that hole, it can run right on out. For many of you, you're going to be doing this on as a retrofit, probably in your existing home. So uh, you're going to have to drill this. If this is a new build, I would recommend putting sleeves into your wall so that you can run your pipes right on through. On each side of that sleeve, you'll have the pipe coming through, and then you'll just have a basically a rubber coupling that goes on the outside of that sleeve and then also clamps against that pipe. It's gonna keep it nice and watertight. If you want your pipes to come through the floor, let's say you're doing a slab on grade home. You don't have a basement like I do. You're probably going to put your pipes underneath your foundation and then run them straight up into the floor. If that's the case, you're gonna to wanna to put your pipes or your sleeves in prior to pouring any of that concrete. Assuming that your pipes are coming through that wall, especially if it's a basement application, you're always going to want to waterproof that. Now, there's different ways to waterproof based on how you built. I built ICF, I made an entire video about how to waterproof around pipes through an ICF wall. For the majority of you, it's probably just going to be a concrete wall. And so you're probably gonna use some sort of asphalt based uh, waterproofer on the outside of it. And if your pipe is going through, you're probably going to put quite a bit, just goop it right on the outside of it. The HDPE pipe as well as the PEXA pipe will be okay to have that asphalt uh, waterproofer put against it. It won't hurt the pipe and it'll provide you a really good waterproofed pipe penetration. 
But let's say that you have put the pipes through, you have waterproof to the best that you can, you have completely backfilled everything, and you're starting to get a leak on the inside. There is remedy for this. Uh, a lot of people will use uh, epoxy injections that you can, you can put in. There's lots of videos out there on how to do that. It could be an epoxy, it could be an elastomer, it could be a uh, kind of a foam sealant that gets pushed into those spaces between that pipe and that concrete to seal up everything. But a way that I've used, and I've used it in my rental homes, is actually, this is toilet ring wax. And this stuff is great for waterproofing. Obviously it does a toilet, but it can be used for penetrations through your walls. Doesn't just have to be for a geothermal application. You can use it for anything. It's very, very common to see those uh, when they are repairing uh, concrete walls that have pushed in and they're putting rods through them to pull that, wa that wall back out or at least hold it in place. They will always goop a bunch of that wax right around that rod and it provides a perfect seal. I've used it on my own properties and it works perfectly. Plus it's a really cheap way to seal it. Here are my pipes coming through the walls. Of course mine are ICF walls. And I have two systems within my house. This one, I got all sealed up just perfectly, and there are zero leaks, so I got it sealed up from the outside. My other system, I did not do such a great job. As you can see on this side, you can see water drippage coming down. I did not get it perfectly sealed on the outside, which means that I actually get, these are actually just stains, not water, but during heavy, heavy rains, I do get a little bit of seepage through. I tried putting some foam in there and that does nothing. So really what I need to do is completely dig out that ICF and then seal from the inside, whether it's with the injectable product or uh, toilet wax. As you can see, I ran my pipes vertically through the wall. So one's just stacked on top of the other, stacked on top of the other. And that does have a certain advantage and it really comes to when you're doing your uh, manifold type system. Uh, the top one there, I've got a nice little cap that I can get all of the air out of the system. If you run it horizontally, you're probably gonna have to put a 90 degree L in that so that you can still get that uh, air out of the system. Either way works. Each has their own little advantage, but it's kind of what kind of space do you have and just it's application specific. Now let's talk about the excavation, the outside. So when you are digging uh, down next to your foundation to be able to put those pipes through, you don't over dig. It's very, very important. You don't want a bunch of settlement around those pipes. So you want to dig right to the level that those pipes are going to be going through. And then when you backfill, I suggest backfilling where those pipes are for at least a foot or so with sand. Sand is easy to compact, especially if you use a little bit of water with it. Uh, there will be very, very little in the way of settlement around those pipes. And that's the big thing. You've got a pipe going through a wall. You don't want it to shear off because you over excavated and then you just plopped a bunch of dirt in there. Be mindful of how you backfill all of this. You want to protect those pipes. Also, don't use rock to backfill around those pipes. Uh, they're too jagged and they can poke a hole in them. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure to stay tuned for this series. Hit that like button as well as subscribe. I'll see you next time.